Hello YouTube world and welcome to the channel. As you can tell, this is not the Andertons. Poor lighting, fan in the background, guitar is not even plugged in. Like, what's going on here? But that doesn't mean I don't want to talk to you about my experience with my Epiphone SG G400 Pro. There's 400 G's in here. So, that's about actually how much it feels like it weighs compared to my Iceman. So let's just get into some quick sounds, acoustically. And it's good too that I have the camera angled the way it is so you can see me. But you can also see just enough of the fretboard so that you knew it was actually me playing. Otherwise you wouldn't have believed it was me. If the guitar was down here and you were hearing that, you would have thought that was Gilmore himself. So I wanted you to know. You had to know it was really me playing. Now... Almost done here. I got a Red Hot Chili Peppers t-shirt. It wouldn't be proper. You get the idea? That wasn't supposed to be a riff, by the way. That was me going up and down the fretboard to show you that this little thing of beauty for $500 Canadian, approximately 355.76 US dollars, you know, since 95% of my viewers are Americans, they don't care about Canadian money. It looks better, but it's not worth as much. All flash, no bang. Anyhow, so I went to Long and McQuaid's. I guess I can come a little closer. No, we'll stay further away. Social distancing. COVID can pass through the webcam. I went to Long and McQuaid's and, sorry, my stupid Mac went off. I went to Long and McQuaid's and I'm mainly an Ibanez guy. Back here, i got this little thing of beauty here. I've got a PS120 Iceman Paul Stanley signature Ibanez. Did I say that right? So I'm an Ibanez fanboy. And when I went to Long and McQuaid's a couple of months ago, by the way, before the whole thing went crazy. I went on February the 29th. Things weren't on lockdown yet. Why do I keep waving my hand? Hi. I walked in and I was like, I like SGs. At first glance, I'm going to admit, I didn't remember anybody of note who played an SG. Angus Young. And a bunch of other people. But I'm saying I had forgotten because I've been out of touch with reality for a long time. I thought everybody was playing a Gibson Les Paul. So, like Slash and a lot of other amazing people. But I saw it and I was like, well, would you look at you? You're all chromed out with the humbucker covers. You've got, it would help if you could see, you could pull on the knob. You got coil tat, well, don't pull the knob too hard or it'll come right off. We're going to have to get in the crack of that there. Widen the gap so I could put my knob back in. Hopefully it doesn't fall out. That's what she said. And it's pretty good. That's minor. But as you could tell, when I started playing it acoustically, it had good sustain and all that. At least I thought so. 
And I was like, this keeps up. It's going to replace my acoustic. It's lightweight. It's mahogany. I'm not going to get into the whole spec thing, okay? I'm not, like, guitar savvy, but I will share this with you, which a lot of people don't make a mention of. One of the reasons I don't like Gibson is because they make 17-degree headstocks. Epiphone use a scarf joint, which, by the way, is more sturdy, and they use a 14-degree headstock. So if you've got a Gibson, pull out your wood. Don't pop your G-string in the, in the process. And compare that, because that, that makes a difference. Now, yes, there's the whole thing with, well, if you're not an idiot dropping your guitar over, your Gibson shouldn't break. You're right, because it's not like you're just going to like play and be in the middle of a riff and your headstock's going to go flying off. That's not what I'm saying. I don't trash Gibson. They do a lot of, uh, of great things. I just feel like sometimes they're afraid to take a different approach and change a few subtle things. But that's another discussion for another day. And so I just started playing it, like I said, acoustically, and I wish more people did that. Because I saw the headstock and I was like, that's an Epiphone. But it wasn't even that, because I had a prior Epiphone in 2008. I had a Les Paul custom black beauty or whatever it's called and it was great it was heavy had a good workout and so i got these here biceps from that but i saw epiphone but that's not even what threw me off it was the price 499.99 500 bucks why do they always do 499 it's a marketing thing you're not fooling me it's 500 bucks canadian okay 355 us and i'm like that's a pile of wank there's no way that this is going to be good. I got an Ibanez PS120. It's like almost $1,500. But as I plugged it into my bias effects on my iPad, and I had my iRig and a Sony XB31 Bluetooth speaker, which is how I jam, don't at me. Except when I'm at home, I use bias effects 2 on my $20 thrift store iMac that I bought from 2010 for 20 bucks. Actually, that's a lie. My dad bought it for me. Okay, He gave it to me as a little gift. I was just blown away. I had people approaching me. Definitely not because of my amazing shredding. Definitely wasn't because of that. It was because they didn't know where the sound was coming from. Because here I am just sitting like this. I got my little satchel on my shoulder, and I've got my iPad mini in here, and I had my Bluetooth speaker, I think, on my lap under my shirt. So there might have been a bulge down there, so that could have been why some people were checking me out. I don't know, but either which way, the sound was good. Like, it was clean, and it was just... It was rich. So I shared that with a couple of people, how I play, and I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. I have an iPhone or an iPad or whatever, and I didn't know you could do that. Wait, you're playing through 1.8-inch speakers on an XB31 Sony Bluetooth? I was like, yeah, you don't need 212, especially if you're just at home jamming. I, I can rattle the dust off the walls at least, maybe not the picture frames, but at least the dust off the walls. And that's the whole point. It's not judging a guitar by its headstock. Or even by the price. Now, within reason, you get what you pay for. Within reason. But the amazing thing with, with Epiphone is when they get their timber to make their wood, they're a little bit more forgiving into what they're going to say is acceptable. So they're a little bit more forgiving. There's my bias effects, <laughs> too, on my iMac. Whereas Gibson one would like to think is more picky with their wood selection. They'll throw away a lot more stuff when they buy timber. Why am I doing this? Okay, when they get timber, they'll throw a lot of the stuff away and only keep the absolute, absolute best. So you hope. Epiphone will be like, ah, oh, it's pretty good, we'll keep it. That's really bad, we'll throw it away. But you could end up with an Epi Axe. 
whose wood is so good that even Gibson themselves would have taken it to make a production line Gibson. So when you go to a store, pick up a few different Epiphones. They might feel different. A couple of different Gibsons might feel different. A couple of anything will feel different. So the main thing I want to share is someone who's been playing guitar for over a third of a century on and off. Can't really play that well. That's not the point. Sure, look at the how the guitar looks, you know. And this one's got the Poe Ferro uh, fingerboard, which I actually prefer over the Rosewood because the Rosewood looks like poo-poo brown. It's really dark brown and it's nasty. And I find it clashes with a lot of different colors, especially like ebony, ebony, and then you got brown. It's like, what is that? That's no good. Whereas this one, I was like, don't don't smack the, the webcam. The headstock might go flying off. Oh, wait, it's not a Gibson. But if you look at that design, even in the poor lighting, you can see it's just got a lot of grain. And that's why I like the Indian Laurel and I like the Pofero over the Rosewood. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. I said it. So to me, it just visually looked nice. I saw Epiphone. I knew that they make good stuff. I know that they've really stepped up their game in recent years because <laughs> they've had some stuff that wasn't so great, but at least the price reflected that. Unlike Gibson and... <laughs> See, I'm allergic to even mentioning their name. I'm just kidding. I don't hate them. I just wish they would do a few things differently. Play it. And if the first one doesn't speak out to you, go ahead, sit down, try even another one. Now, this just so happened to be the last one that they had uh, and in this color. I didn't like the white with the brown. I was like, man, not feeling that. Then they had some standards. This one is a... Uh, well, it's the SGG400, but it seems to look like, based on the pick guard, that's like a half pick guard, like the 61, which I believe was the first year SG came out, which stands for Solid Guitar. It's when Les Paul were trying to compete with Fender and their lighter, faster playing guitars. Don't quote me on all this. I could be talking out of my rear. And so they stopped production of the Les Pauls. Their sales were declining. They came out with these. But supposedly, the number one selling guitar of all time, I could be wrong, Google doesn't know everything, is apparently the Gibson SG. It's not the Gibson Les Paul. That's not even the point of this discussion. Sit down, play a guitar acoustically, see if it speaks to you. And if the first one doesn't, the action's a little high or whatever, a little bit of fret buzz, those are all things that you can fix, or at least somebody else can fix, okay? Because I actually bought this guitar first on February the 29th, and I, and I financed it because that's how poor I am. Then I donated a kidney, and I got this thing, which we're not going to talk too much about because that's not the main focus of this video. Will it let me take it out? Okay, for real. Get out here. Smack the microphone. PS120. We're just going to do a very... Never mind that. We're just going to do a very quick... I know it's not like a super quick side-by-side -side comparison, but... When I got this guitar, it sounded like absolute shit. It was buzzing in a couple of places. The action was too low here. It was too high there. I had to do a quarter turn, lefty loosey, to give it some relief. Because when it's too tight, it's hard to get relief. You know what I'm saying? So I had to give it a little bit of a little loose, just a little... And it just made it perfect so that when I would fret it, it wasn't buzzing. 
Then I heightened the action at the top because it's got a, a tunematic bridge. That's what I love about these Gibsons. They got a tunematic style bridge where it's like a one piece. Well, actually, that's the tail. This is the bridge. It would help if I knew my components. So it's like all a one piece, right? So I just like loosen that screw and the whole top moves and it keeps the arch because the whole thing is one piece. And then when you go to intonate your string back and forth, same thing on the uh, on the SG and most almost every single Gibson Epiphone guitar, if I'm not mistaken, it's just a one screw. That's why I don't like Fender. No offense. Great guitars, great company, very reputable. They got a straight headstock. This one again, I believe, uh, maybe, is it a 10? It could be 14. I know there's a huge, it's definitely not 17. Where was I? Oh yeah, so it's all one screw, whereas on fenders, each bloody string, the height can be adjusted on the string, and then there's a screw on each side, so six strings, 12 screws. No. There's too much screwing there. Six strings, six screws. That's it. And I always want to keep the radius of all the string heights the same, hence the one piece. Again, it's personal preference. Look at this guitar. It's only got three knobs. No coil tapping. $1,500 guitar. I hope the guy doesn't come looking for it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, whereas, like I said, the SG, coil tapping... Uh, which essentially allows you to turn one of your humbuckers into like a half. So it's like a fender without the hum. Um, again, I'm really honest to God, not making fun of uh, Fender or Gibson. Maybe just a little. But they all have their little quirks and stuff. So my point was, this guitar... Oh, it doesn't even play much better. I like it more. The frets. Holy cow, if I'm not careful, I could cut myself. So the frets on this are absolute shite. Now if I'm playing, I usually don't squeeze the neck like this. But if I go like this, which most, I mean, what are you doing there? Like, I mean, okay. Um, it's sharp. Whereas the frets on my SG are perfect. Now you could end up going to the store and you're gonna cut your hands on it you could end up with a PS120 and not cut yourself. So I'm just going to come back here. I'm almost done rambling on about absolutely nothing here. Just bear with me. So I had a lot of fun when I went uh, to the store. Like I said, it was around the time that the uh, pandemic was just uh, starting. But there was no there was no lockdown. It wasn't deemed like you went out, you son of a bitch. No, it was it was okay then, February the 29th. And I had a lot of fun because I do suffer from anxiety really bad. So me going out isn't like a great time usually, unless I'm by myself walking outside. But going into stores with people around and stuff like that, I don't like people. Which is why it's a good thing I'm in Canada, no offense, because the States has ten times more people. There's like 3 million more people alone in the state of California than there is in all of Canada. California. That little Cheetos-looking thing state on the west side. It's reflected. This is my wet. Anyways. What the hell? No wonder people are sometimes, you know, doing each other in over there. There's too many people. So when I went there, it was an amazing experience because it's a quiet store, Long and McQuaid's. And I just had fun just kind of looking at everything and keeping an open mind and not just going to the Ibanez section going, Ibanez, Ibanez, ooh, PRS, PRS, Paul Reed Smith. Uh, I've even played some Fenders, and like I said, they play great. They're, uh, they're great guitars. They're just not for me. And that's the whole thing with guitar, with all the different styles and all that. You like an inverted headstock, six in a row. You like a bit of an angle. Uh, there are some Ibanez guitars that are perfectly straight. Same with Fender. And that's why they have like the little tree string thingy in the middle to keep the strings. I don't know how the, all the science works. I played acoustic guitar 
for most of my life. I didn't. I never got into the whole electric guitar thing because it was too. There's too much funky stuff going on. Pickups, selectors. What is this? I gotta take like a pilot course just to learn how to navigate this thing. So I got into it here and there throughout the years. I think my first electric guitar was uh, a Fender Squire. God, that thing was awful. Never stayed in tune. The uh, but I didn't know anything. But I didn't know anything about action intonation. Um, you know the little steps, the saddles. This is how much of an idiot I am. See the saddles, how they're like they're stepped. They're not all even because that's your intonation based on the string length and all that. I was like, why are all those crooked? I'm going to go ahead with the screwdriver and I'm going to level them all out. Why is that one all the way down here? I'm going to keep them in the middle, keep everything even. Then I was wondering why I sounded like shit. Okay, that's how little I knew about guitars. Because on acoustics, as far as I know, you can't really intonate an acoustic. Can you? I've never had to. So, I'm going on about absolutely nothing. So if you've made it this far, pat yourself on the back and go see a doctor. Uh, because for real, I don't even know what I've said by now. It's been a while since I've been rambling. It's been over 20 minutes. Did a little bit of a showcase, a little bit of a brief noob showcase of the SGG400. Talked a little bit about my Iceman. Mainly talked about, like I said, don't be that guy. Don't Just don't be that guy that's, that'll overlook a guitar because of their price or the name on their headstock. So, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. You didn't like it. Give it a thumbs down. I'll make sure the next time you go to a guitar center or a Long and McQuaid's or anything, I bonk you in the head with, with an Epiphone. Not a Gibson, because you'll get off the hook because I'll tap you and the headstock will go flying off. You don't want that. You want the full, like, oh, uh, and then you're out cold because the headstock will actually stay on this guitar. I know, I've made enough fun out of them, about them. So just do that. Just have fun with it. Don't get influenced by your friends or even your favorite musicians. I like Angus Young. Angus Beef is really good. Angus Steak. Anyways. I like him, don't get me wrong. ACDC, I know who he is. But up until a couple of weeks ago, I forgot that he played an SG. I mean, the guy just keeps like dancing around all over the place and like waving his thing around. And couldn't really make out. Black shorts, black shirt, black guitar. Couldn't wasn't sitting there going, that's an odd-shaped guitar. Like, I just didn't pay attention. So I didn't even know he played an SG. So when I walked in, honest to God, in that moment, I didn't know anybody who played an SG, let alone an Epiphone, because it's all Gibson. So I felt like I was being semi-original. And that's incredibly important, because when I was younger, in the 90s, I was always made felt like if you didn't have a Fender American Strat or a Gibson Les Paul, you just weren't cool. That's pathetic. I had, like I said, a 2008 Les Paul Epiphone Custom. You know, the whole black with the gold hardware. Oh, that's a nice axe. Is it a Gibson? I'm like, nope. It's an Epiphone. Ah. Like, what is that? What kind of attitude is that? Yes, a Gibson, by default, should be a higher quality instrument. But they can sound, Epiphones that is, almost nearly identical. There's a little bit of that feel, nitrocellulose finish I believe on Gibson's where it's polyurethane on the Epiphones with the cheap veneer when you play a Gibson excuse me and you push your thumb down on the back of the neck there you tend to feel the music more when you're playing a Gibson there's just something about it I don't really quite get that on an Epiphone but you know you want to pay an extra $2,500 for a bit of a vibration in your finger. 
Might as well stick it in your butt and twirl a bit. To me, that's not really important. But it's just to highlight that, yes, there are differences. Sometimes you can even just look at a Gibson. You can go, wow, and there's just something about looking at them sometimes that's appealing. <clears throat> but you want a wall ornament or something you can actually play? Yes, you can play the Gibson. I'm just saying I would worry. There is one Gibson that I actually would like to get. It's the SG HP LMNOP. No, it's the HP for high performance. It's got like titanium everything, even the truss rod cover, everything's titanium. It's quilted maple top, uh, maple flame top, whatever. It's a blueberry burst. Look it up, 2019 Gibson SG HP, blueberry burst. Titanium nut, I mean everything, it's wild. Which brings me to my final point. One of the things I hate about SGs and Les Pauls, Les Pauls have all the cool paint jobs. SGs, not so much. It's rare to get any type of cool looking, in my opinion, paint jobs like the Honey Bursts or anything or the Mojave Fade, which I love, or the Lemon Burst or anything. Anything that a two $300 Epiphone Les Paul will have, you can't quite often get that in even one of the slightly higher end SGs from Epiphone. So that kind of bugs me a bit. I wish we could take the paint jobs from there. So then I found my perfect guitar, but it's $2,700. Canadian. It's like three thousand dollars Canadian. Twenty two, twenty three ish hundred American, I wanna say. But it's got the ebony fretboard. Like really? Am I gonna go and spend that much money and finance that? Just because of that? How important are the looks of a guitar? Man, I'm really itchy this morning. I was fine for a while there. That's the other thing. How much do you value the look of your guitar versus how it plays and feels? To me, ultimately, that's the first thing that matters. Looks, eh, they're a bonus. But when you're paying for that bitch, I'm just saying, you should be allowed to be a little bit more picky. Be like, listen, you're a little, uh, okay? You're a little light, I want you a little darker, whatever, I want you glossing. I want the ebony fretboard, not the Indian laurel or the Pacific, whatever they're called. You're allowed to be picky when you're paying that kind of money. This, the birds are, I must have woken up the birds. When I started my video, it was dark out. It was pitch black. The sun is up. How long have I been recording? A half hour. It's got to end. So yeah, so my ultimate guitar is the Gibson SG HP Blueberry Burst or the 2017 Mojave Fade Burst. There's a huge difference. I don't remember. It's just Mojave SG. And they're wicked. They're amazing looking. So yeah. I don't know what else to say. I'm going to end it here. Take care. Stay distanced. Stay happy. If you play the guitar, play more. If you've never played a guitar, start playing. There's some amazing deals for even a couple of hundred bucks. You can get, uh, you know, a half decent little whatever guitar you want, whether it's an Epiphone, an Ibanez, a Jackson, anything. Just get going. It's a lot of fun. See you all, or some of you, or none of you, in the next video. Bye for now.